Um, I got on that road early in life, and I normally don't tell the story, but I am. I came from a little town called Brownwood, Texas. Anybody know where it is? Yes. Love you. Um, <laughs> and uh, my mom was a teacher. She taught me, by the way. My dad was a salesperson. He had to drop out of school in the seventh grade. He lived in Eagle Pass. His name was Roy. He was 6'5". And my name is Roy, so he called me Royito all my life. <laughs> By the way, I make the greatest salsa called Royito that you can get at Whole Foods or Central Market. I got to sell shit. Anyway, so <laughs> <clears throat> I learned the power of purpose. My sister, God rest her soul, was named Susan and Spence, and she was born in 1944 with spinal bifida. Now. I know Bobby knows what this is, and some of you might, but spinal bifida is a birth defect that basically what happens <clears throat> is that uh, all the nerves that are supposed to go into your legs ball up in the back of your spine in an open wound. And in that back in those days, the average age was four months of life expectancy, maybe a year. And my sister lived to be 49 years old because of my mom. Us kids would push her stomach and take her to the bathroom. We didn't know, because she was paralyzed. We rubbed her legs so she wouldn't have bed sores. We didn't know that was. And I pushed her to school every year for seven years. I could barely look over the wheelchair, and I had my band of brothers, and we'd all, we looked like the grapes of wrath going down. <laughs> but anyway, and I pushed her to school, pushed her home, pushed her to school. She graduated from high school. It's unheard of. I got her in a community college here in Gonzales, Texas. Pushed her every weekend. So I'd go down there. Moved to here. Judy knew her. And don't, don't hate me, but every Sunday we would listen to the Dallas Cowboys and eat Whataburgers. And I'd push her. She, <clears throat> when she passed away, I was in her bed. And I uh, realized sorry, um, <clears throat> that all these years I've been thinking I'd been pushing her, she'd been pushing me. And uh, to this day, she's my hero. And she used to say, now, Rito, you know you don't have to have legs to fly. I went to the University of Texas, whatever, and um, <laughs> I met this rascal, Judy Travolsi, and two other partners. We did multimedia shows at the age of Marshall McLuhan. Classes were the last thing we were interested in. And our media company was called Media 70. That's a great name until it was January 71. So don't name your company after a year. We would do these badass multimedia shows, Chris, and all you guys back there who run the audio. And students would line up thousands when they come see our show. They'd pay us 50 cents. Or a brownie. We can talk about this stuff now. Okay, we, this, is, this is America. We can, it's currency, as Matthew said. So we graduated, I think, and we sat down one day and said, what the hell are we going to do? And one of our partners, Judy knows this, Steve said, well, I sold ads at the Daily Texan, so I think, why don't we go into advertising? I said, great. What, what is that? Kathy Compton, don't get freaked out. She's my client at the American Institute of Architects. But So I went down to the bank, had a brand new tie-dye t-shirt. My ponytail was looking like awesome. <laughs> went to City National Bank. Our loan officer 45 years ago was a guy named John Oliver. I didn't know anything. I'm sitting in his chair, and he pats me on the back and said, son, do you have an appointment? And I went, no, but you're not, like, busy. Have you ever seen a busy banker? Anyway. <laughs> and so he sits down and he says, so what's your name? I'm Roy Spence. What do you want to do? We want to start an advertising agency. What do you need? I said, I need $5,000 to start the business. And he said, well, what's your business plan? And I said, beg, beg your pardon? <laughs> Vivid, I remember. What's your business plan? We want to, like, stay together. <laughs> this is no kidding. We want to stay in Austin. We want to make a difference and get really rich. And he lent me the money. <laughs> if you need to borrow money, I can get the money, OK? And by the way, we paid that back a couple of weeks ago. So 
because you get, it takes time to work through these, finan- these complex financial matters. Road to Purpose, 15 years ago, we're at a reception. Judy, my partner, is at the Headliners Club. Guy walks up to me named Sam Perry. He says, you know this guy over there with a cane talking to everybody? And I went, yes, sir. His name is Robert Sneed. He was a mentor of us, a lawyer here in town when we were young. And he said, you remember that $5,000 you borrowed 30 years ago from City National Bank? I went, like it was yesterday. He said, do you know that he co-signed that note and never told you? He wanted you to believe that you could get it on your own. How hard is this? If someone helps you, you help somebody else. Now, don't be standing in line after this thing asking me for shit. But anyway. <laughs> I, 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 but it's true, people. If someone helps you, you help somebody else. That's the way it works. Judy and I get a call f- about four years into our business. We were hand to mouth. We didn't have any clients. We just barely made it. We made 80. 80- Judy keeps everything. I think our first paycheck was $85 a month, something. Yeah. And um, we ran a congressional race against a guy from San Antonio, and our candidate won. And we were 25 or 26, I don't know. And he was, our guy was not supposed to win. And all these powerful people in San Antonio was backing a guy named Nelson Wolf, who we beat. I get a call from a guy named Herb Kelleher. And Colleen Barrett, Bobby. And Colleen said, we're in San Antonio. You kicked Herb's butt. He wants to meet you. I didn't know who he was, so whatever. Found her southwest. I drive down to San Antonio. We talked for two hours about life and politics and he had 28 airplanes, by the way. I was 28 years old. I'd never flown. About two hours in the meeting, he says, do you drink? I went, a lot. <laughs> he said, good. So he pulls out this mayonnaise jar. His pilot had smuggled in mezcal, a little worm at the bottom. We drank it all, ate the worm. He hired me. <laughs> 35 years later, we're still doing Southwest Airlines. Herb taught me, probably in Judy, the best CEO we've ever had, except, of course, Kathy and you, whoever's. Anyway, um, (laughs) he taught me a lot of things. One, how to drink and smoke on the job. He was like the best. (laughs) I was inducted to the American uh, Advertising Hall of Fame. Only two Texans have ever been, by the way. Thank you. Um, It was well deserved. But anyway, the year before, um, I introduced Herb. And I told 10,000 people in the Waldorf Astoria when I introduced Herb into the Hall of Fame, I didn't know he drank until one day he came into a meeting sober. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what he taught me? And Judy, take the competition seriously, but not yourself. People in the convention and meetings business, y'all, I'm going to get into this, have so much pressure. Lighten up. Have some fun with this. Now, I know you can, we have pretty good fun here in Austin. Also around my neck is a symbol of every religion in the world, right here. Cover my bases, yes. But anyway, not really. There's only one thing that unites every religion in the world. It's the golden rule. We need to have golden rule summits around the world. The next year I get, you young people don't know what this is, I get a collect call. Now, stay with me here. From Sam Walton. That sheep son of a... He calls me collect. <laughs> Karen, and you know this, Bobby. Karen, my assistant, has been with me, Tiffany, for 36 years, by the way. And she said, Roy, there's, there's a collect call from Sam Walton. I thought it was my dad, you know, because he, he was a cheap ass, too. And, <laughs> hey, Pops, no, oh, oh, Roy, this is Sam Walton. I like you because my dog food is named O'Roy. Can you come to Bentonville, Arkansas? I've seen what you did with Southwest. We're, not, we're going into the urban areas. Can you come to Bentonville? I'm now shaking. I'm 29 years old. And Sam Walton is calling me. I borrowed another $5,000. 
Here's what we had to do back then, though. No kidding. Fly Austin, Dallas, Dallas to Fort Smith, Fort Smith to Fayetteville, rent a car and go through Hog Eye and Conky Town and get to Bentonville. So I'm sitting there. I had one of those big oversized briefcases we used to have with nothing in it. <laughs> and there's Sam right there. And David Glass and two other people. And I, I have the briefcase in front of my knees so that people don't know I'm shaking. So Sam says, oh, Roy, so glad you're here, but where's the rest of your staff? Yeah, that's what happened. Where's the rest of your staff? And they're staring at me like you are. And I was frozen. And finally, I said, well, and I pulled my shoulders back, and I said, well, you know, Mr. Sam, there's an old saying in Texas, one riot, one ranger. What kind of problem you got? <laughs> it's in his book. One riot, one ranger. What kind of problem you got? He falls out of his chair. He puts his arm around me and says, Oh, Roy, you're hired. 17 years. Got to ride and travel with that man. And we got lucky in life. DreamWorks, everything. I mean, all of these purpose-inspired organizations. And finally, quick story, and then we get into the meat of this. And I promised my wife of next year, 40 years. Thank you. Lucky girl. And so <laughs> um, I promised her I would never miss one of my kids' birthdays. Well, of course you're not. We only have one client here in Austin. It's sad that the people who know us the best don't hire us, but we're working through that. <laughs> uh, DreamWorks, United States Air Force, BMW, you name it, John Deere, all over the world. They don't call me up and say, hey, can you be in Munich? And it's tomorrow one of your kids' birthdays. I didn't miss my girls. It got through it. My son is 15. I get a call on this emergency shoot that I'm filming. And I realized I was on Missy's birthday. So I was filming these two gentlemen, and I said, would you do something special for me? So I'm going to play you what they did, and I'll tell you why I'm playing it. Shay, the first time I met your dad, he wasn't much older than you are now. I want to wish you a happy 15th birthday and say I hope you look as good at 56 as he does, and I hope you're a whole lot smarter. <laughs> Shay, this is the old guy here. My kid did all right. Uh, president of the United States, and the dad like this, you got obstacles. We all know that, but I think you're going to make it. We've heard wonderful things about you. Happy birthday. I got home at 5 till midnight and gave this to my son. I was with Bill Clinton about eight years ago in Haiti. By the way, I used to think I had problems. I don't have problems anymore after going to see, and I missed my son's birthday, so Bill cu cut another video for him, and I got two texts from my daughters, please miss my birthdays. <laughs> anyway, these two people had not talked to each other in five years. Bill had just had quadruple bypass surgery. Get a call from the White House saying, there's a tsunami that hit 2,000 miles away. Can you get Bill Clinton and Papa Bush together? That was in Little Rock. We went to the library. That's what purpose looks like. We're not going to get anything done long term in this country on common ground anymore. We have to go to higher ground. You know what I'm saying? Higher ground is where things are accomplished. And by the way, millennials, you young people out there, it's your turn. John Kennedy was elected at 40, Bill Clinton at 41. We've got old people running America. Oh, did I say that? OK. <laughs> anyway, these two guys, this is a true story. I was with Barbara Bush. Judy knows this not two uh, Christmas ago. And she said, Bill Clinton is my husband's son. Now, it's a dad that Bill Clinton never had. When 
Katrina hit, I got Bush and them billed together, and we raised $250 million in one day. When Haiti happened, I got W and Bill together. I'm like the e-harmony for politicians. But anyway, <laughs> no matter what you think about this last election or the elections to come, and I don't, I'm not preaching one way or the other, all I know is America needs to go to higher ground. And by the way, I speak all over America, and people don't know what my politics is because I'm fabulous. But I literally, when I talk this way, people come up to me, and they're all political persuasion. If you talk to their best instincts, America wants to climb this mountain again to higher ground.